So you probably already know what the major arpeggio is. But if you take that arpeggio and add one extra note, you can create a really interesting sound. And just by adding this one extra note, it gives you loads more melodic possibilities when you're improvising. So of course you can find these four notes in the major scale, then you can apply those four notes over chords that are built with the C major scale. First of all, of course, you can use it over a C major chord. You can also use it over chord two, which is D minor or D minor seven. And it works really well over chord four, F major. But it doesn't stop there, because you can find these four notes in the scale of F major. Now the chords from the F major scale that I like to use this shape on are of course F major. You can use it over B flat major seven, and here you're helping to create what's called a sharp 11 sound. And you can also do it over a C dominant seventh or a C dominant seventh sus chord. And there's even more chords as well that you can find this shape in. If you write out your F melodic minor scale, you can see those same four notes, C, E, F, and G, are also in the F melodic minor scale. So we can build chords from the F melodic minor scale and apply that same shape over the top. So we can use this over an F minor six or an F minor major seven chord. Another really common chord you'll see in jazz standards is a dominant 7 sharp 11, and these are often used as secondary dominant chords. And in the F melodic minor scale, that's chord 4. And these next two are really useful. First of all, you've got a half diminished chord in the melodic minor scale. So that D half diminished, often you'll see a D half diminished as part of a minor 2 5 1 going to C minor. You can use the C E F G shape on a D half diminished chord. And finally, you can also use this on a dominant seventh altered chord. In the F melodic minor scale, the seventh chord you build is known as E7 altered. Now what this means is you can use this one shape over the most common chord sequences, namely a major 2-5-1 and a minor 2-5-1. So here's an example line improvising with those three shapes on those three different chords. Now if we turn this into a minor 2-5-1, we'll have a D half diminished chord to start. We can still use that same 1-3-4-5 shape on the D half diminished. The G7 we're going to think of more as a G7 altered chord, and so there we can use the E flat 1-3-4-5. And for the C minor chord, we're going to think of that as like a C minor 6 or a C minor major 7 chord, and so we're going to use the G 1-3-4-5. <laughs> Now in the link below you can get a free PDF of all the lines I've played today and premium members will have access to those same 251 example phrases transposed into all 12 keys so you can see exactly which shape you can use on which chord. If you'd like to learn how to improvise then you can also head over to the courses page at Online Sax Academy where I'm currently building out a how to improvise course which will step you through right from the beginning. So have fun exploring this interesting sound and see if you can use it in some of your improvisations and of course if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next week.